If you're new to GarageBand for iPhone, in this video I'll share what I think you should do when you first download the app. Speaking of downloading the app, if you've yet to install GarageBand onto your iPhone, here's a quick run through on how to grab it. Open the App Store, tap on Search, then type in GarageBand. GarageBand will pop up in the search results. Hit Get and it'll start downloading to your device. Once it's downloaded, hit Open and you'll be taken to the welcome screen. GarageBand will ask for permission to access your device's microphone, which you'll likely want to allow. And on the next page, you'll be asked if GarageBand can send notifications when new downloadable content is available. Whether or not you want to allow notifications is completely up to you, though I would say that GarageBand doesn't spam you with daily notifications or anything like that. You'll only really get one when a new sound pack is released or an update is available. After that, you'll get access to the Sound Browser. The Sound Browser is where you'll find all of GarageBand's instruments. Audio recorder, guitar amp, the sampler, the sound library, and if you have installed other compatible music production apps on your device, the external apps function. Swipe left or right to view the different instruments available, then tap the one that you want to play. The options in the lower part of these cards take you directly to things like chord strips, note views or scales on touch instruments, gives you different rhythm input options on drum and drummer cards, allows you to jump straight into certain presets on amp and audio recorder cards, and allows you to select from different third-party instrument options on the external card. Note that you can't access GarageBand's tracks view at all until you've added one track to a project. Most of GarageBand's touch instruments work in the same way. There's a play area where you'll use on-screen keyboards, strings or drums to play the instrument. You can change the sound of the instrument using the knobs, buttons and other controls found in the controls area, accessible by tapping on the controls button. Here's a closer look at GarageBand's Grand Piano Touch Instrument. Using the grand piano, you can play notes, chords, and scales. You can choose from different piano, keyboard, and organ sounds by tapping the button here and selecting the current patch from the menu. In this next menu, you can select sounds from a variety of different categories. Tap the chord switch to change to the chords view. You can play higher chords here by tapping the upper segments of a chord strip. And lower chords by tapping the segments at the bottom. There's also an autoplay function that you can access by tapping the controls button and turning the autoplay knob to one of four positions. Tapping a chord strip will play a pattern with the notes of that chord. Tap a different chord strip to change the notes that are played. When you're ready to record your touch instrument, tap record in the control bar. Recording will start at the current position of the playhead. You can tap anywhere along the ruler at the top here to reposition the playhead, or hit this button to send the playhead back to the start of the section. The ruler shows the area being recorded in red. 
any notes you play as well as any changes to sliders, knobs or other controls are recorded as well. When you're done recording, tap the play button in the control bar. Your recording will then appear in the tracks view as a region. New projects default to a BPM of 120 and a key signature of C major. You can change these settings and more by tapping on the cog icon in the top right of the screen. Other options worth noting here are the ability to change time signature, metronome and counting options and in the advanced section the ability to turn on 24-bit audio recording. I'd actually recommend turning this on and leaving it on ASAP. To get back to your touch instrument from the tracks view, tap on the instrument icon in the top left of the screen. If you want to record some real audio like your vocals or an acoustic guitar or something, you'll need GarageBand's audio recorder. You can head back to the sound library by tapping on the icon with the three squares on it in the top left of the screen. Then swipe until you see the audio recorder and tap on it to open it. As the on-screen prompt says, capturing your recording is as easy as pointing your iPhone towards the sound you want to capture and hitting record. Now obviously knowing where your built-in microphone is located on your iPhone will be helpful. To find where the mic is located on your model, just go to apple.com, look up your iPhone model and select tech specs at the top. Then just scroll down till you find the buttons and connectors settings. I will say though that the vast majority of iPhone models nowadays do have built-in microphones on the bottom edge of the device. The input meter on the left of the screen will tell you if you're too quiet or too loud. You're aiming for maybe just over halfway for an optimum recording volume really. If the meter goes into the red, your recording will sound distorted, this is called clipping, and there's not much you can do about it once it's recorded, so take some time to get your levels right before hitting record. When you're ready to go, just hit record. Once you're finished recording, you can add some of these fun effects. This is a recording of my voice on the iPhone, I don't know why I'm singing. This is a recording of my voice on the iPhone, I don't know why I'm singing. Or you can tap on the controls button for some more sensible and probably more usable controls. This is a recording of my voice on the iPhone, I don't know why I'm singing. To switch audio recorder patches, tap on this button and then tap on the currently selected patch. You can then select a different patch from a variety of categories. GarageBand includes a selection of Apple-made audio and MIDI samples that you can use to easily add drum beats, bass lines, rhythm parts, synth leads and other sounds to your project. You can quickly find loops using GarageBand's loop browser and preview them to find the ones that you want to use in your song. To open the loop browser, tap on this loop browser button. Note that the loop browser button is only available in the tracks view. The first time you open the loop browser, it shows the instrument grid. Now, here you can search by instrument, you can search by genre, and you can search by description. And the results list shows loops that match your search criteria. Drag a loop from the results list into an empty part of the tracks view screen and then align the left edge of the loop with the bar or part where you want it to start playing. Apple regularly add new instrument patches, loops, drum kits and more to GarageBand in the form of content and remix packs. 
At the time of making this video, there are 30 content packs and 12 remix packs available, and they are all absolutely free to download. You can find the sound library in GarageBand's sound browser, or by tapping the More Sounds icon found next to many of GarageBand's different touch instrument icons. When you open the sound library, you'll be greeted with a selection of different packs that you can download. Each of these packs has a different name and icon. You can find out more about a specific pack by tapping on it. You'll get an in-depth description of the pack, a list of what's included with the pack, and the ability to preview some purpose-built music that make use of its contained sounds. This 8-bit Legends pack, for example, contains 70 new Alchemy synth sounds, 7 drum kits, over 250 Apple loops, and an additional live loop grid. If you're just getting started with GarageBand for iPhone, let me know what you're struggling with most down in the comments, and give that like button a good hard slap on the way past, I really appreciate it. GarageBand for iPhone is a really powerful mobile music studio. One of its best features that you really want to get to grips with is its built-in sampler. For more info on how that works, watch this next.